An ultrasonic range sensor is a type of distance sensor. It uses short pulses of sound to measure the distance to nearby objects. Today we're going to look specifically at a HC SRO4 range sensor. These are generic parts now. They're, they're made by lots of companies. And they've come down dramatically in price and are quite inexpensive. We're looking at the one from the Elegoo kit that we have with the course. Let's look closer at the device. What we see are two ultrasonic transducers, a transmitter and a receiver, and four electrical pins. So the principle is that when a pulse is received, the device emits a very short pulse of ultrasonic sound. This is 40 kilohertz sound, about twice as high a pitch as human hearing can hear. And it travels out to the object, bounces off, and then the first echo that comes back is signaled back to the Arduino. It only, it only listens for the first echo, additional echoes are ignored. The time of flight is proportional to the distance. Sound travels in air at around 340 meters per second, about 1,100 feet per second, which is 34 centimeters per millisecond. So uh, each millisecond sound travels out uh, 34 centimeters. An object 34 centimeters away would take two milliseconds total round trip time for the sound to get there and back. And then other distances are proportional. Let's look briefly at the data sheet. I highly recommend that you uh, download the package for our course kit from the Elegoo uh, website if you haven't already. It contains lots of tutorials, but also lots of data sheets for all the parts. And we're going to have to learn a little bit how to read these. Um, a couple things to note about this. The, on, look on page two, we see first a diagram of the device and a, a pinout which describes the pins, which is very, very typical for electronic data sheets. Let's look at a few of the specs. First thing to check is that it runs on 5 volts DC, so we can run it off of our Arduino power. It has an advertised operating current of 15 milliamps, which is roughly about the same as an LED. So this is fine, plenty, uh, it's low power enough to run easily off of the Arduino 5 volt output. It has a maximum range listed as 4 meters. What I find is in practice, it's hard to really achieve that kind of range. The echo return sensitivity isn't so great at such distances, but with some care you can use it over a pretty wide range. The minimum range is listed as 2 centimeters, um, and it, they actually can detect fairly close objects. I don't know if quite that close, with a measuring angle of 15 degrees. That's, it's not a terribly well calibrated uh, angle, but the sound comes out in a cone that expands as it goes out. Objects within that cone can produce a return. It's very empirical. You have to test your individual device and the materials you're bouncing off of to see how, that, how well that works. Page 4 has the kind of active electrical timing diagram, which defines what we're going to do. So this, this kind of timing diagram is also very common in electronic data sheets. The first line shows a trigger pulse that's a minimum of 10 microseconds wide, and that is the signal to the device to begin generating ultrasound. When that pulse goes low, it generates 8 cycles of 40 kilohertz signal, which is used to generate the acoustic pulse going out. That's relatively short. 8 cycles at 40 kilohertz is 200 microseconds. So it's not a lot of, of time uh, for that pulse to be generated. Some, somewhere around the time that that pulse goes out, the echo pin goes high. It's the duration of the positive going phase of the echo pin which tells us how far away the object is, is. When the device receives the 40 kilohertz signal, there's some detector that has to you know, see enough cycles of the sound to get a positive reading, then it will bring the echo pin back low again. So it's the total time that the echo pin is high that tells us how far away our object might be. So that's the kind of basic sort of diagram of how the device is put together. Um, let's go now look briefly at um, the sample circuit I have. So there's an exercise on the course side called Read Ultrasonic Ranger, which has sort of a basic sketch and circuit for testing out the device. And we can see is that the four pins, there's VCC, which is tied to five volts. It's the power supply for the, for the Ranger. Ground is on pin four. That's the other end of that. And then there's two pins for the digital uh, communication. The trigger pulse is output from the Arduino, and that's the 10 microsecond signal which instructs the device to begin generating the sound pulse. The echo pin is, is, is the signal from the device back to the Arduino with, where, whose positive going pulse indicates how far away an object might be. The pins that I use for this example are D7 and D8, but you can use any pair of pins. I don't recommend ever using D0 and D1, but you can use the other pins and if you need to adapt this into an existing circuit. Within this page is a, is a reference to the read sonar sketch, uh, which is another which has some sample code for how to run the device. And let's go ahead and try that out. I'm going to bring up my Arduino system here, where I have the sample sketch loaded. 
So uh, if I go ahead and um, compile up with the sketch, it'll go down to the device. I'll get it ready to actually test. So the first thing is I'm going to open the serial monitor and see what it's printing out. What we can see is uh, that it's measuring the distance to some nearby object. I'm not exactly sure what, about uh, 1.4 meters away. If I put my hand close to it, you see those distances numbers drop dramatically. My hand is now kind of a short distance from the device. And we can see that we get some readings that vary. Let's take a closer look at that. If I can get this lined up here. So on the top, we have the, uh, right now it's saying no ping. So the echo pulse is, is coming back too late to be detected, and the software is simply reporting no ping. Somehow that pulse is getting lost over in the corner of my room. If I now put my hand in front of it, maybe about five centimeters away, I think I have a loose wire too, actually. Huh. OK. The hazards of breadboards. OK, my hand is in front of it, and yeah, it's saying six, seven centimeters. That's approximately right. If I about double the distance of my hand, I'm getting about 10 centimeters. That's about approximately right. If I try to come in very close, at some point there's a minimum distance. Four, three. I'm not actually getting quite, this is actually about the two centimeters away. I'm not really getting the advertised two centimeter minimum range, but I'm actually getting a reasonably reliable signal at around four or five centimeters and up. So it does actually get you a proportional signal. Um, and it's, you know, it's sort of, it's not precisely calibrated, but with some work, you could probably calibrate that to get even a more precise reading. So that's, that's the operation of the device showing that you can get like a bounce off my hand and a bounce off nearby objects and things that are too far away. Like basically if I sort of turn it, I might be able to once again, find a spot where it's not really, there we go. No ping. Sometimes the echo pulse takes too long to come back and then it just reports no ping. Let's take a quick look at the code itself. That's doing this. So most, there's some initialization at the top, and there's a couple of the calibration numbers. The most important things to know are that there's the speed of sound is in the code for calibration, and there's a choice about the maximum distance that can be measured, which determines the maximum duration that the, that the software will wait for that return pulse. Most of the work is down in a short function called ping sonar. So let's look at that, how that works. The first few steps are... The first few steps are a digital write, a delay microseconds, and a digital write. The first digital write turns that pulse high to begin the output pulse. Delay microseconds we may have not seen yet, but it's a version of delay that accepts a microsecond value for a very short delay. And then the digital write brings the trigger pulse low. So that is, causes the device to generate the acoustic pulse. While that's happening, after that happens, sorry, um, then the pulse in function is called in order to measure the pulse duration. It takes a pin number and then a, a signal that the pulse is a high going pulse and then a maximum duration to wait. That's the timeout. And what it returns is a number in microseconds, which is the duration of the pulse. Pulse in is a little problematic in that the, the Arduino is stuck in a polling loop just waiting for this pulse. It can't do anything else. And if you're not careful about the timeout, it can actually stall for quite a while and, and cause everything else to stall if it doesn't actually get the, the pulse return. It's not the only way to accomplish this, as we'll see in a second. But that pulse in value returns a number of microseconds, or it returns zero in this case if there's no pulse at all. And then most of the rest of the code is simply uh, you, uh, taking some calculation to try to scale that into a distance and printing it out, um, including the determination of, of no ping if, if the duration is zero. That's a, not a bad way to get started. It actually is a reasonable sort of measurement of the, of the sonar. And if you're not doing too much in your code, it's pretty workable. Um, even if uh, you have to sort of manage these, these no ping results and um, you can get some timeouts at really long distances. There are more, there are newer libraries. This code I wrote in, to be as self-contained as possible and use only standard Arduino functions. Um, many people recommend the new ping library in particular as a alternate way of measuring sonars. It works with more devices and has more means for measuring the timing signal that work with a greater variety of programming styles. So those are some several techniques that you might apply if you're doing a more sophisticated project uh, involving sonars or multiple sonars.